Yeah, so I'm the oldest. And then my parents still worked in New York the whole time. So we were like latchkey kids. My younger brother is seven years younger than I am. So, you know, he's, I'm nine, and he's two. We're in the house together. You know, I mean, nobody, it's too late now, don't call child protective services, stuff like that, because, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was little. You got a nine-year-old outside his mind, right? But, you know, but, and that was the thing. So for him, it was always, me, I was always the big brother. And then, you know, I was the oldest guy in the neighborhood. So all, so I would have, I'd be in charge of all the young fellas, all the boys. It would be my job to make sure we were, that we were safe. You know, and that, that old rule, you, you, you could leave the house for the day, you come back, you stay in. So we'd be out all day and I would navigate this whole day, right, we're gonna do this and do this and we're gonna play every sport and all that stuff. So then, like my brother, like he was always like, we would play pick up football and street ball and you know, the easy way to watch somebody is to engage him. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, look, my brother's playing, but he can't be tackled. <laughs> you know, we tag, uh -huh. tag uh -huh. for everybody else and tag for my brother, mm -hmm. he's younger than us. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how he developed the love for the game and we ended up luckily enough being there to play and football. And being successful. Oh yeah, definitely. Both of you. Well, yes. But that's, that's the other thing in our family. So like my dad, he always said this, he said, listen, whatever you do is your choice, but you better be damn good at it. You know, you're gonna be a mechanic, be a good one. You're gonna be a boxer, be a good one. You're gonna play football, you're gonna coach, you be good. So even now to this day, he's still like, you know, if, if we don't score enough points, he called me and said, son, what's going on? Like, you, you're slacking, you need help? No, sir. And now, you know, he would, he would, he comes every game. My, he would, uh, him and my mom, they attend my, every Friday night there in my game, no matter where I'm playing. Every Saturday at my brother's, no matter where he's playing, every Sunday they're watching the grandkids play Pop Warner. But you see what you said, and I want to put that out there because you're an educator too. Yes. You're not just a coach, you're an educator. Um, you said something that you might have thought got past you when you said, yes, sir, no, sir. Mm -hmm. You didn't say, mm-hmm, or suck your teeth or any of that there. <laughs> you understand the concept of protocol and discipline in the house. Now, that sensitivity of having that there, how is it that you and your coaching staff have gone from Newark Brick City, and you've been given an opportunity in West Orange, which is still a working class city, but just to maybe a little different as far as support and things of that nature there. Mm -hmm. How has that really catapulted your energy? that you infuse in your players, not just players, but your students. Well, like we say, the, the uniform may change, the logo on the chest might change, but the energy in the program doesn't change. You know, we come with, with some principles and some standards and some things we do. And that, I mean, I'm from country folks, man. We moved, my parents are from South Carolina, we moved to the Bronx, so there's a sensibility to rules and order and a manner in which we carry out things. And that's how I am, that's how I, I coach. You know, my, my, you go to my team, I, I don't care if I'm in Irvington High School, I'm in Malcolm Mitchell Baths, I'm in West Orange. You ask my boys the question, yes or no, sir. Right, and the reason being is not because I want to glorify myself, but I'm trying to teach life lessons as well. And I'm trying to make my young men understand their place in this world and the totem pole of things. Like you don't, you're not, you're not going to be the GOAT on the first day. Right, you got to build to it. You're not going to be at the end of it, at your best, you be your best self on the first day. Right, and the only way to become better is to do what? Learn from the ones who have gone before. So we have respect for, you know, uh, those who come before us, tradition, right? And, 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 and pageantry and all that stuff that comes with it. And as well as putting our young people in line, in line of succession, oh, look, you're next, right? You're following this progression. You're gonna be the next great player here. And I think that's always been my thing and always been like a sense of history. But I was a history teacher by trade, so you know, that's, always having a sense of history and a sense of my place and even guys like yourself, like learning. Who you them. are. Yeah, who I am you and, know, and where I, we're going. I, I want to say to you, and this is the first time I've ever said it, and that's this here, that you're not only inspiring and motivating, but you're consistent. And you can feel the energy mm -hmm. that is the fact that you know who you are and where you come from, and you're trying diligently to get where you envisioned yourself to be because you made your plan. Now, let's speak of the coaching staff, of the loyalty that you have. Bring that out too. Oh man, so, I mean, I, I am, I am, I've had the pleasure of being with these guys. Some of these guys, man, almost, I feel like forever. <laughs> with Cyrus Hart, my defensive coordinator, we've, we've been together, we've been best friends since eighth grade, right? And when I decided to coach, um, he was my first hire. So I, I, was, I was the freshman coach. I said, man, I need help. I need somebody to help me run this defense. He says, well, <laughs> He says, well, well, there's only one spot, so we split it in half. It's you and I. 
And I remember our first game, I, we were so excited to coach our first game. We're coaching freshmen playing Memorial West New York on you know, a Friday afternoon, back with freshmen playing Friday afternoon. So I'm teaching at the time. I'm teaching at Thurgood Marshall Elementary, teaching fifth grade. And so that morning I call Cyrus and say, yo, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to your house, pick you up, right? We had one car at the time. I had the only car. So <laughs> drop me off at work, right? And then you'll get, yourself, get everything ready. Get our coaching clothes ready. Get everything ready. Pick me up. We're going to come. We're going to win this game. She said, all right, I got you. I get off work, 2.30, I come outside the park a lot, no Cyrus. <laughs> Two, 2.45, no Cyrus. This before cell phone, pooch. So I'm running back to the main office, calling his house. You're trying to, aging yourself, hey, don't do listen, that. Listen, man, it's a <laughs> you blessing. You look young, but don't listen, do that. <laughs> it is a blessing to be this age. I just turned 50 this year. I'm That's on my way to 51, and I'm, I feel, like I don't feel old. But you came through rough times. Yeah, oh, definitely. I feel seasoned, though. But anyway, he's not there. So me being me, I start walking. Got my, my teaching bag on, I'm in hard bottom <laughs> shoes, got a shirt tie on. Then I'm getting close to the game, so I start running. So I'm running down Clinton Avenue to go coach the game. He, he overslept. Okay. I get there, I get the team together, I'm in a shirt and tie, hard bottom shoes, right? Loose my tie, I said, fellas, I had a rough day, but we gonna win this game. <laughs> so I go and get the team, and we're down. We're down two scores. He shows up in a second, I said, what happened? I overslept, because he worked nights. So it can happen. Yeah, so whatever. So we go, we coach the game, and we win. We come back, we throw a touchdown at the end of the game, we win the game, we're hooked, we're hugging each other, we couldn't believe that we won the game. You know, and that was just the thing. I, I mean, forget all that. I mean, I mean, 200. Is that the little short guy? Yes, about what yes sir. And he's, he's been, a I mean, good guy. Not a great he's guy, a great, guy. fantastic coach, man. He's when you just, see you, you see him. Yes. You know, um, I wanted to speak in, um, I always speak of this year because I'm a daddy's boy. Yeah. I love my mama, mm -hmm. I'm a daddy's boy. You seem to be a mama's boy, but you're a daddy's boy too. Well, while we, we sit in our house, mama's boy, daddy's man. And that's kind of- Would you speak on that, please? Yeah, so, and we love, you know, you, you know my mom. You see her every game, you see her, she's in a concession stand, she's doing her thing. Yeah. And you know, and she, and she loved us. She's the nurturer. And nurtured us, and grew us. Your father's the shepherd. Set the standard. Why is that so important? Now, we're talking different times, different mm -hmm. generations. Mm -hmm. How is it that you understand that? And it seems, is it getting better now? Well. It's like we say, there's, there's, so for us, I'm, I was blessed, right? Blessed to have my dad my whole time. My dad's still a major part of my life. And I was blessed enough to have him and have an example. So then coming and giving back and, and going now and being in the educational realm and coaching, things of that nature. So all I ever try to do for my guys is be the example I had. That's it. Like, I don't, like, people like, well, like, uh, like I'm not going to raise you, but I'm going to show you. I'm gonna, you're going to see me every day. Right? I'm coming to work every day. Right? And I'm coming to work every day and I'm giving you what I got every single day. Nah, I'm not taking a day off. I'm not going to slack you. I'm not going to not coach. I'm not going to short you. I'm not going to have advice or mm -hmm. examples or a way to point you. I'm going to give you my best every single day because that's what I got growing up, his best. So that's infectious. And my coaches are the same way. I mean, I have Chuck Keegan build me 15 years, Donald Massey, <laughs> the young guy, been with us 12 years. And some of these guys, I mean, some guys are are my former teammates or guys I've coached or guys I've collected along or the way. Or you've coached. Or I've coached them as well. But again, that I tell them we set the standard and it doesn't change. You know, it's the same every year. Then we want the very, very best. But to get the best, you have to do what? Give your best. Also, I want to bring out how it has a certain amount of passion that you deal with handicapped students. Yes. That's not an easy task. No, it's not. How has that helped you to navigate the blessings that you have, the shortcomings that your students don't have, not because of their own doing, but because of that's the way the ball fell. Well, what do you say? We only as strong as what? Our weakest, weakest link. link. So if you're going to be a shepherd, right, what is, are your goals to do what? Raise not, 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 not just not be a front themselves. runner, protect the ones who can't protect themselves, and help, help our weakest links. If we can make our weakest links stronger, we can make them whole then what, the chain is even that more fortified, that stronger. So for me, I'm like, my, it's always been my niche. For some reason, I guess maybe because I was a hard to handle kid. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe my niche has always been, I connect with those guys and, and those guys and girls on a different level. And I'm able to to see, see I guess hopefully see the real child and see the real person that's out, right? Despite all the nonsense and what people, other people may try to put on them. And from there, try to help them be them best, their best selves. So are you saying that it's not really about football? That's your vehicle that you use. Exactly to navigate them through whatever yes. chaoticness they might be going through. Yes, yes, 
Yes. I mean, our, my goal for, for my young men is always what? To get to college, right? To get and graduate, right? They say what? What? Uh, 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 from our community, a, co- a man with a college degree is going to earn $1.3 million more than someone who doesn't have one. So every time we get a young man off and done, what have we done? We create a millionaire, right? Based upon what they tell us. So my thing is if I can push my guys and nurture them and grow them and sometimes kind of kick them in the butt a little bit, right, to get them to where they need to be, what have we done? That's how we change, right? You say you want to give back, give back to what? You want to build the community, how? You build the community by building stronger men to lead. So that's my goal. So we try to be, we, we try to be whatever, like try to fill all the gaps, be all things to everyone. So those who need the discipline, you know, we we rid of that. Those who need just a path, I'll give you a plan. Those who, yeah. How proud are you? How proud are you of your brother that is pretty successful himself? Oh my God, I mean, that's, that's my favorite coach. If you ask me who's the best coach, I know my brother, right? And he, I mean, he's able. He was able to do such magical things at Hillside and just turn it around so fast. And you know, we call it Grant Ball, right? And Grant Ball. Grant Ball. So we don't play football; we play Grant Ball. And so, okay. we, so we got a way in which we do things. That's different. And a few secrets that only we have, right? And things we developed over the years. And then we did watch. you put a patent on that? No, I, I should. Right? <laughs> I think you should. I should write it and mail it to myself, something like that. But so that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you end up doing. But and then that's the thing. So it's like, and then to go and and even like see, even our teams, like come together. Like we do a seven on seven or oh, we do? scrimmage. Yeah, we scrimmage do. Yeah, sometimes. And then things that sometimes we just work, we just train together, right? And to hear the kids, hear, hear his kids talk, right? And they're, they're saying the same things, repeating things that my kids say, like, yeah, they do that too, coach. Yeah, no. I said, you're in the system. You're in the system, you're a part of something. You're a part of something that you'll see at one point, hopefully be greater than yourself. Let me ask you this. How has it helped to have a feeder program and a community that has embraced you when you were an outsider? Well, you know what though, it, it wasn't easy. I, I'm not gonna ever, I'm not gonna ever, like joke about or act like it was an easy task. You know, coming from outside and coming from where we come from, sometimes people kind of look at you with the side eye a little bit because they look at what like whatever whatever stereotypes, whatever negative things that they've heard. But that's America. Yeah, that's America, and they, and they try to put it on you. And I'm like, I'm not that. So and so it's been great to kind of dig in and build with these people. We're on our fourth year now, and it's finally coming the way we wanted to come. I think we've had the success that we really wanted to have last season. And, we, and the program building so now there's a level of trust. So they know me. And support. Yeah, and support. And great support. And that's the one thing we have great parents. Also want yeah. to bring to the forefront, how is it, or I think needs to be showcased, the difference of, uh, there is no difference in kids per se. No. From an ethical perspective, how has that been challenging to you too? Well, so for me, people would think. Yeah, people. So they would. So people think this. Oh, well, because well, they try to make nuances and it's none. They ask you well, how, well, how you're coaching. What What are you doing differently that you didn't do at your last place? So I'm like nothing. So I coach exactly <laughs> the same. I said a kid's a kid to me. I said, and you'll be surprised that some of the struggles that we've had. So it's so similar because kids are kids. You know, a, kid, a child's a blank slate, right? Us as adults, we got all these hangups and yes. and, and our, our own. Uh, takes and perspectives yes. and opinions that we place on things, but kids are kids. They come every day, bright eyed, but you tell them they want to learn. They want they want someone to teach them, whether they're white or black or brown or wherever they are, whatever you whatever where, and wherever they come from. Once we get them into those lines, it's all the same. They want to learn. They want to win. They want to compete. And they want to be better. They want someone to teach them how to do all those things. So. Well, I was glad to know that you're cognic of the uh, obstacles that were confronting you Mm -hmm. and you dealt with them in a very, very mature way that is beyond your years. But again, it goes back to the foundation which you came from. Yes. And the geographical concrete jungle of the Empire State to the uh, concrete jungle of Brick City and Irvington. Because there is no difference between the two. When you were in school in particular, Mm -hmm. there was no difference of Camp Town in Brick City, interchangeable, it's interchangeable in our. But the thing about it was, I maybe I wouldn't, I wasn't this guy ten years ago. You know, I think that when I uh, we were very successful in Irvington, but when I came to to Newark, when I came to the Bricks, I, said, I got my master class in coaching. You now I was lucky to catch like good brothers like Alistair White at the tail end, and he kind of helped me like shape, like to put the final touches, the finishing touches, so to speak, on our on our coaching philosophy and our methodology. I mean, good brothers like Dave McCombs. You know, learning from Dave and talk with him. Good, good brothers like Luke Grimsley, man. And but that's.